Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So I'm out here in my yard and I wanted to shoot a quick video on one of my favorite products just to introduce you to them. I'm not affiliated with this company but I do love these products and I've had them for three years. So we're in the middle of a thunderstorm, we just got some rain, I came outside to shoot this video real quick and it's about to start raining again so I'm going to wrap this up rather quickly. But the product I want to introduce you to is called Earthbox. So Earthbox creates a variety of containers. Uh, that you can use on your patio or um, your deck or any other space where you need a container garden at. If you're looking to do what my friend Jess says and turn your waiting room into a classroom, this is a great opportunity to get some veggies grown if you live in an apartment complex and you can't invest in putting raised beds up. They're relatively inexpensive. Um, they're $30 and it's a roughly one foot by two foot container. Um, you can pick them up online. I'll put a link below. It's just earthbox.com. So this is the original earthbox. They also have a kid's version, which is I believe slightly smaller, and then they have a square type of container as well. So a couple years ago when I was looking to expand my garden and expand my garden space without actually getting into the yard very much, I did a lot of research around what containers would be safe for growing food and if there was anything out there that was self-watering and would help cut down on the amount of watering I have to do and Earthbox checked all those boxes. So you have the container and there's a uh, plastic food safe uh, barrier that raises the soil slightly and the bottom of the container holds water like any other self-watering container you've probably seen. So there's a small pipe back here in the very back. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. It's kind of hiding behind this pepper, but they also offer a self-watering kit. So the intention of this kit is to hook it to your hose and keep your hose running all the time. And as the plants drink water, the hose, by using this pressure valve, will release new water into the container. So it would always be full and have water available at all times. I use the self-watering feature a little differently. The self-watering feature is an additional cost. It does not come with the earth box itself, but you can refill the containers yourself um, without having to purchase the self-watering set up. When too much water has entered the container, it overflows on the side, so you don't have to worry about your plants drowning in water, which is very nice. So a few years ago, after I did all my research, my dad came up here and helped me build these um, raised beds, basically, and it's just a uh, ledge that these earth boxes sit on, and I have them stacked end to end, all the way down this way, and then down my vegetable garden and that way. As far as how I have this set up on drip, I have this connected to the rest of my vegetable garden as I mentioned. I have one half inch hose that runs under these boxes, the wood boxes, and runs all the way down to the end and I have the end capped. Um, and then from there on the half inch distribution tubing I have the one quarter inch hose that runs up along the side of the boxes here in the back and just connects to this tiny uh, section of the uh, valve right here and so whenever I turn on water for the garden water just drips into these boxes until the water reservoir is full and then um, the plants soak up water from there actually after I get everything planted in these at the spring I don't touch them again there's no there's no watering needed um, which is excellent and they basically just take care of themselves. if you need to fertilize your plants halfway through the season that's a great option but I typically do not my peppers really thrive in this because peppers as you may have heard like to hold hands and so as I mentioned I can fit four in here and most of the peppers that I grow are bell peppers uh, and a few spicy options but they are they do absolutely fabulous and I get some very large pepper harvests out of just these containers alone. So the self-watering setup comes with this. This goes in the tube where you would normally refill the uh, self-watering container with a water hose uh, and instead you connect a one quarter inch drip tube um, to this end, it will come with the tube. And then this end down here goes all the way in and sits at the level of the self-watering reservoir. So when the water level drops in the reservoir, it's a pressure regulated uh, device right here and it tells it to put more water into this. I will put a short video on the side of how this works and show you. Uh, basically water drips out of this tiny hole right here um, when more water is needed in the container. So like I said, the intent on this setup was to keep the water running and connected all the time. If you're not comfortable doing that, I have mine set up to my regular sprinkler system and it gets watered when 
um, all of my other beds get watered. So I'll turn on my sprinkler system to run for 30 minutes. These will run continuously until the self-watering reservoir is completely full, and then they will stop. And then my bed will continue watering for the duration of that time. They have been excellent for me for growing anything. I have mostly herbs down this side. So I have oregano, thyme, calendula, chives, sage. Uh, I even have, as you've seen in my previous videos, uh, bushel and berry variety raspberries and blackberries. I've grown lettuces and my peppers have exclusively been grown in these for the past three years and they absolutely love them. I'm able to fit four pepper plants in each container. This one only has three because it was just extra. Typically my, plant, my peppers are on this side of the vegetable garden. And, but this is the Proven Winners um, Hot and Heavy variety. And let me tell you, this pepper, they named it very well because it has produced more peppers uh, than any other plant in my garden this soon and they're actually ready. I need to come out here and pick them. I'm not a big fan of hot peppers, but we can try them in some salsa after I get some tomatoes going. So these containers stay out year round. I don't put them up. The only thing I'll remove at the end of the season is this because this could potentially freeze and bust and I, because these aren't necessarily cheap, um, I don't want to have to replace these every year. So I just unhook the quarter inch drip and bring these inside or store them in the garage where they're dry. And then in the spring, I'll bring them out, slide them back into the uh, pipe of the self-ordering container and then connect the drip and we're off to the races. In the spring, before I plant, I typically add some compost or a good organic potting mix on top of this to top it up and as well as add some nice organic fertilizer just to keep nutrients in the soil. Um, I haven't done any type of crop rotation. My perennials, uh, my perennial herbs that essentially stay in these boxes have been planted three years ago and have survived winter very well. Could be because it's on the side of the house, but most of these herbs are also hardy in my zone. So I believe I have a total of 15 of these. I have some geranium stuck in here, some calendula that is open pollinated that I've been growing in my garden for several years. You can grow pretty much anything and everything in these earth boxes. Um, the larger varieties that are square, you can grow carrots in because they have a more, much deeper soil reservoir. Um, I would highly recommend these for peppers, herbs, and uh, lettuces and that type thing, the original earth box. They have various other accessories for these, including a cover if you wanted to actually just cover the earth box, almost like a weed barrier, and then cut holes just to put your plants in there so you don't have any weeds. As you can see, I've got some weeds in these right here, but they come out really easily because the container stays sufficiently moist for the plants and the weeds are just easy to pull out just like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to get out here and do a quick video to show you guys something that I have found very beneficial, that's food safe, that uh, allows you to grow lots of food in a small location if you can't get your hands in the ground. And that has been reliable for me for over three years. So stay tuned guys, I will be doing a garden tour this weekend. Weather permitting, we are supposed to get quite a lot of rain but I'm very excited because parts of the garden is absolutely bursting in bloom and there are still some things to come, but there's a lot of cleanup I need to do between now and then. And with all the rain coming, I don't know if I will get to all of that, but I will be giving you a garden tour this weekend, which will be up hopefully by Sunday night or Monday morning. So take care guys, enjoy. I'll just provide a quick update to the incredible hydrangea hedge. We just got a serious downpour, so you can see how sturdy the incredible blooms and stems are versus the old Annabelle type. And you can see absolutely how big some of these blooms are getting. I mean, look at this bloom compared to my hand. Uh, they smell amazing. A lot of people don't consider uh, hydrangeas to be fragrant, but these, just walking up to them, you can definitely smell the perfume. Some of the older blooms are starting to get their chartreuse green coloration, uh, which absolutely looks great, and dried flower arrangements. So before long, we can start taking cuttings of those. But just look how large these blooms are. It's crazy. The daylily hedge is also looking gorgeous. Um, the flowers just got rained on, so they're a bit rough. But someone was asking about my uh, Stand By Me Clematis as well on a YouTube video and here it is. It has the most gorgeous purple little blooms um, this time of year and it starts getting these 
lovely seed heads. Uh, it does get a little tall here and start flopping over. You can see the cage that I have here to hold it, but it just gets too large and no longer stays in the cage. Stay tuned for the garden tour, guys. More coming this week.